Today, we're gonna find out if this VST plugin is appealing to sample based producers. Yeah, that was pretty corny. Tramtendo. What is going on guys, DJ Ab here, and I'm checking out the Pill VST plugin that is by Zplane. I've checked out Zplane Dakota on this channel and I really did enjoy it. And a lot of people want my opinion on this, so I'm gonna weigh in with my pros and cons, my hot takes, and show you how it could work in your workflow as a sample-based producer and, and just give some pro tips and then, yeah, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna see if it really is a spectral analyzer type plugin or is it just an EQ? Let's begin. Well, I'm in foreign land as I have FL Studio open and that's not often on my channel, but yeah, I wanna show you how it works inside of FL Studio, but let's talk about this UI here. So it's pretty simple and sweet. It's a resizable UI, so it is vectoral, and I think that's pretty professional in that regard here. But, you know, since this is FL Studio, it doesn't work firsthand, and I wanna show people that might wanna download the demo and try it out for themselves uh, how to get it to work because they might not think it will work. So uh, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you hit this cogwheel and then hit the plus plug sign and the cogwheel and then go to uh, processing because you need to turn one of these off to be able to use it inside of FL for some reason. You FL gang guys are very special, you know that. So uh, with that being said, uh, we're gonna see how it works and go through its functionality. So, so how pill works is it isolates sound. So it basically isolates stuff via a EQ, but you can see in a box shape. So you can pretty much take sound out. Let's get rid of that. I had to use something where I wouldn't get any copyright claims, but yeah. As you can see there, I just wanted to demonstrate that so you can see uh, the potential appeal in itself and you know how you will basically use it as a sample based producer. You would just basically just isolate whatever is part of the sound or what or filter out those frequencies. And you can change the, the look of it in this sense here. I guess you can change how it analyzes. You can see that you have your 10K, 5K, 2K, 1K, 500, and so forth in Hertz. And that's what that represents. And then you can center in and left and right here. You can filter out left frequencies, filter out right frequencies, and then just have an overall stereo uh, reflection of whatever you have left if you are choosing to inverse or not, because that I was inversing here. So, so I'm isolating just the lower frequencies. and now it's kicking out the higher frequencies. And that's basically how it works here. Uh, in Ableton Live, you don't necessarily have to jump through hula hoops and, and get it to work in, in that sense. Uh, what you would do here is, let's go ahead and grab an instance appeal. All right, so I have the demo here. Let's go ahead and play it. And now as you can hear it, uh, what I'm gonna do is just turn it down slightly and open up Pill. So we have Pill in Ableton Live and it works just straight up. You don't have to do anything. Now the plot thickens on why I don't use FL in certain cases, but. So one of the things that I really like about Pill in a nutshell is that it's a different way to look at your frequencies and that's cool. Uh, however, what is the difference between using pill and using a parametric EQ of some sorts. So I have the FL Studio parametric EQ2 open for a reason here. I think it's a really good reason for me to talk about this. So if I was to just start this uh, demonstration or this demo. I'm basically doing the exact same process as Peel, 
but I'm just using this EQ over here and I can just get more detail in and out. It just won't be the exact same way of chopping out frequencies. But this is the way most sample based producers have worked for years. They either use a low pass or high pass filter. And even if you look at the bottom of the parametric EQ2, you see 20 hertz, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, uh, 200 hertz, 500 hertz. And then you have a one kilohertz, which is 1000 hertz and, and so forth. You, you kind of get the point of where I'm trying to drive right here. And if you're wondering, yes, you can do uh, something similar uh, in Ableton Live. I just pulled up an instance of EQ8 in Ableton Live. Just to show you here, you could do the basically the same thing. I don't want to be negative about it, but I, I think that pill is strong. Uh, and in, in this case that you can box it out, it's a different way of EQing out stuff or filtering out uh, different frequencies, but it's not on the cutting edge of what everybody was hyping it up to be. Let's use this in a scenario that is proper and use a full song. So this is something that I produce. So I don't know much about no person. And you can see, you kind of see that you can carve out acapellas. However, it's not as isolated as other tools that exist. Uh, but therefore, it's still pretty decent, though. So I'm in the lower frequencies right now. And that's like an inversion of what was going on. So, I don't know much. so you can get that. Let's carve out the bass. The clouds, the See, you, you really don't get the perfect scenario, but for the price point, I mean, it's, it's pretty decent. Uh, if you have something that you want to select out of a track or something like that. It would just depend on the pre-existing transients in the song and how dominant like a certain sound is and then you'll be able to carve it out. Uh, my suggestion though would be different tools. Like for instance here, you can only draw like squares, rectangles, and that's it, you know? It would be cool if you can just carve out like a circle or even have like a free linear a drawing system and that way you can draw out the transient in the manner that you would want and that would be great so <laughs> very interesting hot take coming in uh, pros and cons and stuff like that i definitely want to hear from you guys in the comment section so i originally did my pros and cons with a different outfit on obviously and then i had a change of heart and and play with it a little bit more and kind of develop you know some solutions to what could make for a better update and i will go with the pros first so the price point is really good for a spectral analysis eq type plugin it's probably one of the few so that way that in itself you can't really rate it lower than what it is i i mean it'd be kind of unfair is it perfect no could you get different results uh, using different tracks because different tracks have uh, different transient characteristics and different stereo imaging. However, I would like to point out some cons that would make sense. Well, there are pre-existing tools that are out but cost more like Isotope RX 7 or 8 uh, are very capable of spectral analysis and they are very good at removing drums, uh, removing vocals, making instrumentals, uh, making acapellas, just taking percussion, drums or whatnot. And the only caveat to that is the price point is about five times as much, three times as much as Peel. Do I, do I, do I give this the stamp of approval? Well, I will upgrade it from 45% to 60%. It's above average.